It's time to strip down an old friend. Hi guys, Retro Tech Ralph here. I've got, right, we know we've got the Fairchild in the garage. We've had this for a while. This is the, the second version of the casing. This was Chris's, gave it to me a while ago and I've, I did a review on it and assured it working and everything's fine, but I never actually did a strip down, a uh, cling down of the insides. Hopefully it shouldn't need anything, but it's more instructional then. If, if it turns out that way that it's nice and clean inside, it's just a, let's have a look in. Let's have a look and see what, what there is inside it. Now, the grandstand video and cinema center just basically means it was the UK's version of the Fairchild. It's exactly the same. They just branded it in the UK as, as an admin grandstand Fairchild. It's all the same company. They had the, the legal right to show, to um, sell this over in the UK. Now, what I had to start with, Chris gave me number one, these are all the cartridges for it. This was the first cartridge-based system that ever came out. I think it was one, two, and I think it was, might have been five we had. But I've been busy, I've been buying. So we've got 13 as well, and three. So one, two, three, five, 13, and without a number 10. So I'm getting on with doing a collection of these. There's about 20 odd in this, the proper series. There are compatible cartridges that come with a, it, it says a different system, but they are compatible. They're, made, 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 they're the same games as what you get on here, but they're on different cartridges. So like the Knots and Crosses might be on cartridge six, and the card playing games might be on cartridge 12 or something. It's, it's all on there, on, on e there's a few on eBay, there's some, it's difficult to try and collect, but one day, hopefully soon, I'll be able to get them all and have a full set of these. So it's not impossible to get them, it's just, just got to be patient, they'll come on eventually. So we open the box, we have the Fairchild. One lovely power supply, which all works. I don't think I'll strip that down. There's no need to. It kind of it does actually work. So that wants to be over here, ready to be plugged in. Now the Fairchild itself. Now I've got its books inside anyway, the warranty card and other bits and bats, which they'll, they'll stay there anyway. There's no real point in getting them out. I've got a few different grandstand systems, other videos if you're interested. Right, so, we're not going to plug this in, we don't really need to plug this in, this is a stripped down video. So we have the admin, cartridge goes in the front, I'll show you the number 10. It just slides in and it clicks into place. And to get it out, it just springs quite casually out. It doesn't shoot off, it just springs and you're out. The cartridge itself, I love the spring on them, and it's just a cartridge, because the, the um, Yes, it's a circuit board with obviously been burned on memory for the game. I don't think we need to take that to pieces. I'll probably end up losing the spring though, in my look. It won't be on two separate parts. Yeah, we'll leave that as is. I'm not bothered about looking inside a cartridge just yet. So, power lead goes underneath here and is attached in the back. But what I need to get rid of is these two controllers. Because if you can see, they can twist them left and right push forward, backwards, left, right, push it all the way around. There's a fire button as well, and there's also a pull-up as well. Whether or not games actually use that, I don't know. No fire buttons, everything was just hold. Or, very awkward system to actually use properly. But I remember us actually playing this quite a few times. So first off, for stripping down, I always thought these were fully wired in, but they're not. They're actually on the end of five pinned ins. So can very easily get rid of these. I don't know if anything else will work on this. Or maybe a quick shot. I honestly don't know. So for the tear down, we don't need the controllers. So let's have a look. I've never stripped one of these down before. So I'm not entirely certain if you can or not. That looks kind of loose. If 
We haven't got a, a, an address on there. I'm not sure you can see that. There's a name of the postcode for Sheffield. That's not my area. S9 is a different area. Why that's dark, I don't know. If that's them, if them crude paints, it's Fairchild. Cambridge. No. Fairchild Camera and Instrument Corporate Corp. And then some other bits. It's, it's hard to figure it out. Pursuit Part 2. Hmm, no idea. Right, let's see how we can test a piece of We've got a socket there. I have no idea what that socket's for, unless this is a... Oh, no, that's, that's the aerial. Okay, forget that. Because this is the power supply lead. Right, so we need to get in. I'll assume it's underneath these cork feet. I don't know if they're original or not. But we need to get inside this. Oh, look at that. Look at the burn marks on the side. That is not down to me. Honestly, don't know. Let me get rid of the controllers because they're in my way and I'll see how I'm supposed to take this to pieces. Okay. Disassembly is, is a little bit tricky. First of all, you have two screws here. That, that, take them out. That loosens the front part of this. Now, the second part is on the top here. There's a tab there, there's a tab there. This one has broken off. I've got half of the plastic there anyway. That was already broken, so I can repair that anyway. So that tab goes on inside there, but you must try and get them prized over. Now, I thought these would come out, but these are also the same idea. There's a tab there that you push in and be able to come out, but there's a plastic rivet which you need to melt out to get rid of this entire thing. I don't think it's needed, but you must get that tag over like that. The other one I don't need to because it's already broke off. And then it comes up eventually. I don't think you have to remove those anyway. I think they might be all right without being interfered with. I don't like moving the old plastics like this. Might, I don't think that will go in actually when we've get around. So you mustn't have to take them off. So upper casing comes off. There's a dint on here actually. If we can, no. I say if we can knock it out, then we might be okay. Right. It's a very smooth on-off switch. It's quite weird. That's on there for the earth. Power supply at two, twenty-two hundred uh, ultrafarad capacitor, and a second one there. They don't look any problem whatsoever. I'm not going to even gonna attempt to replace that. And there it is, there's a fair trail for you. That's the complete mechanism here. That should press down. You put the lid back on. Yeah. Surprisingly, it's quite clean. Why is there an LED in there? Oh. Never noticed an LED while playing, but why put an LED in? Unless it's for testing. But you've got to think this is 1976 when they built these, and these will have been massively expensive for doing an LED. They're about, they were about three pounds when I used to start playing with them in the 80s. So in the 76, when they were quite early new, they would have been quite expensive. Main chips there, the FM9102 chip, the 8350 chip there, and God knows what chip doesn't say anything at all on it. This is Parts of memory down here. Oh, what have got in there? That's an MP1H on the label. MP14 PAGS. Uh -huh. I'm not altering anything, this works fine as it is. But nothing looks like it needs doing. Caps look fine. Chip looks fine. I just need to give it a bit of blowout. Sockets up here. Well, there's something up here for possible. It's probably for the American market. But we just have that for the RF. It doesn't seem to change unless any of these are for the RF. Mm. No screws underneath where the 
with a feet off. So I'm not taking those off. I don't know if they're original or not. I remember Chris, back in the day, had a... There was, there was a lot of cork around his room. I think he disliked cork. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of things you could possibly mess around with, but I ain't going to. This is a lovely look inside of it. In fact, it's getting a bit dusty in there. I'm going to blow everything out. So let me get my, um, yeah, get some air on this. Get this dust free, shall we say. That's better. Got rid of a lot of dust and stuff inside there. I nearly lost one of the labels, but that's okay. Let's stick that back down again. I want to try this with the power on. I'm not bothered about anything else being plugged into the TV. But I want to see why that... The LEDs there. So the power supply out. Trust me, I'm not touching anything. This drops down to I don't even say X voltage, shall we say? So I am there. Suck it in there. Six up top of there. All right, dangle down, and on she goes. Now. It is on as well. I mean, you can see that. Why is there an LED inside and you can't even do anything with it? Power off. Power on. Power off. It must be for a testing sort of thing. So why would they put an LED in that they're never going to use? Unless they thought people didn't want things lighting up. But for 76, that'd have been amazing, that. Something that lights up. My and Merlin, the same sort of era. Maybe a little bit later, but yeah, that I mean, that was fine. That was LEDs that were working as the as a, as a game, but yeah, there's not much to this, is there? It's a few chips. It's nice they've actually got memory chips on on the like, on here, processor and whatever, but hmm. There's not much to this, but then again, it's just got to run a certain way and then you add in your, your cartridge game anyway. So... Ooh, this shoot out quite well. I think that section there is just to hold it in place. You can't see this part here, because it is on a, on a door. Because it won't close or shut anything anyway, unless it is the flap. Yeah, it's the flap, the angle of the flap on here. Just kind of make it seem like it's closed all the time until it's opened up and when you put your cartridge in. Yeah. Just, it doesn't really click into place at all. It just kind of, you know it's safely in there. And this is probably now happily playing its own game. Hmm. Yeah, there you have it. There's the inside of a Fairchild Channel F, the um, Mark II version. So I assume there's not much difference between this and the other one, except you have a cartridge slot, well, you have a slot on top, which you put a couple of your cartridges on top, which is completely useless. Hmm, that might have been a different idea. Where to go? If there's no one else to do it, put your cartridges on top of there. Same size hole. Tiny bit bigger. Yeah, virtually exactly the same size hole. That's quite strange, isn't it? But that's the way they made them back then. I do like that LED. Why would you have one on there where it's not going to do anything? There's a metal part there which diverts whatever light away from there. So you can't really see anything from it on this side. But from that side, you can. But there's nothing apart from this hole in the side. Let me show you. This hole here in the side. We have to give you any any light through, but this doesn't have any holes apart from the, the burn marks of a yeah. Of a young kid who unfortunately was over zealous with a Stanley knife back in the day. But still, it's absolutely spot on condition. Why's he got scratch underneath here? How do you get scratch underneath there? Hmm. Yeah, I'm glad I've got this. I 
it gives me something to start collecting. And there's, a, there's an end to it, at least anyway, because I don't think they're producing new games for this. If they are, then fine, I'll, I'll see what I can, I can find, but it's a lovely little system, I suppose. But the first ever games cartridge-based system that was ever brought out. Before this, there was nothing. And after this came the Atari 2600. We've got plenty of those. We love Atari 2600s. So, yeah. Got to give you a clue of what's inside here. There's a lot of components in here which do not look like the nowadays equivalents. Just turn that on. Yeah, that's fine. Plug back out of this. It's like this thing here, God knows what it is. Some caps, solid caps, there's loads just just growing like mushrooms, to be honest. But it looks absolutely... Well, it's amazing what they used to do back then. Nowadays, everything's just on an app. So it's um, a completely different way of doing things, but they're still the same gameplays. Yeah. I like that. Everything, like I said, everything works fine on this. No need to test it, no need to faff with it. Ribbon cables on there look like being stretched on that one. They look fine to me, there's a bend on there. But it's absolutely fine, nothing touchy, nothing problems. So, spot on. Hope you like that. I, I quite enjoyed looking, uh, trying to take things to pieces. Not to see how they work, just to see, to look at them for the nostalgia side of it. Because you know me, I got a clue how most things work anyway, but I'm a trier. I'm a trier at times. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed having a look inside the Fairchild F, Channel F, of the Grandstand Admin, Fairchild, shall we say. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.